This is part three in our introduction to VRI Suite Lifecycle Manager. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Vavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. There are multiple videos in this introduction to VRI Suite Lifecycle Manager. Take a look up there for the whole playlist. In the previous video, we saw how to use VRI Suite Lifecycle Manager to install VRI automation. Specifically, we took a look at how to apply our license and our certificate. In this video, we're going to continue the installation and we're going to see specifically how to use VRI Suite Lifecycle Manager to configure VRI's automation within our vSphere infrastructure and the network. Let's pick up where we left off in the labs. All right, so continuing onwards here, we'll click Next once again. And now I'm going to be asked about my vSphere infrastructure into which we're installing VRI's automation. So up top here, it asked me to choose my vCenter server. I've already configured this vCenter server earlier in Lifecycle Manager. If I had multiple vCenter servers, I could select from them. But in this particular environment, I only have one. I get to pick which cluster I want to install VRI's automation into. Um, so for instance, perhaps if I had a management cluster, this would be the point at which I would say I want to install VRA into the management cluster. I get to pick which VM folder I want VRealize Automation to be installed into. Um, in this case here, it's already uh, selected the default uh, VM folder called Discovered Virtual Machines. I'm going to remove that. I could go select another VM folder, but if I leave no VM folder set at all, that's going to install VRA um, outside of all the VM folders just above them. If I had a resource pool set up, I could select it here. Um, I currently do not have any um, sub-resource pool set up in vSphere, so instead I'll just leave this blank, which will install the vRealize Automation product um, at the top level of my cluster. I can pick which network to plug vRealize Automation into. Again, I have multiple choices here, but I'm going to choose to plug VRA into my management network. I get to pick which data store I want VRA installed into. I'll choose the first. I get to choose whether to have the virtual machine, excuse me, the VRA virtual appliance um, deployed using a thick provisioned virtual disk or a thin provisioned virtual disk. I'm in a small environment here, so I'm going to choose thin provision to save on disk space. And then the last check, uh, slider that we have here asks me whether I want to integrate uh, VRealize Automation with VIDM. Over in VIDM, there's an account called Config Admin. If I simply slide the slider, VRA will be automatically configured to use that specific account. So here on this screen, I've answered questions about how I want VRA installed into our vSphere infrastructure. So I continue onwards by clicking Next. I'm taken to a screen where I'm going to provide information about the network infrastructure. So for VRA to function properly, it's going to need to know what the default gateway is for the network that we're plugging it into. It needs to know the net mask, needs to know its domain name, needs to know the um, default domain name search um, path. In both cases here, we're going to say vclass.local. And then under DNS servers, I can add one or more DNS servers that the VRA clients will use for doing name lookups. And if I scroll down a bit further, as you can see, I can configure here through Lifecycle Manager how I want VRA to perform time synchronization. Now, in this case here, I'm going to use an NTP server, and that will be the one and only NTP server in this particular demo. If you had multiple NTP servers in your environment, you could select them individually. Alternatively, instead of using NTP, you could use the uh, time synchronization with the host that the VRA appliance is running on. But in our example here, we're going to use an actual NTP server. Let's continue onwards. Click Next. And as you can see here,
Join me in the next video as we complete the installation.